Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Okay, this is as the introduction will is not about Oman Dry Dock Company. I'm not here to market for the company. I'm sitting at the helm of uh, its operation. I'm the deputy CEO in charge of operations. So anything from uh, marketing, bringing the ship up to the time when we invoice the customer and get our money. Now, last year, and you can take this as a case study to uh, what Mr. Idol was uh, presenting uh, previously. Last year, we opened the door to SMEs. Uh, the dry dock has been dealing with many on a supply basis. But regarding the operations, it was the right time to start experimenting and see how much they uh, add value to our uh, operation and also, of course, how much we can give back The presentation will include these five main points. And as a company, we are involved with uh, many kinds of operations. So any, any kind of engineering, uh, technical skill, and also non-technical skills are required within this large op operation. Okay, we'll discuss why we need SMEs. We have a history, as I said last year, so we have a year and a half of history with SMEs, so many failures and some successes, and operation methods, and of course some SMEs still exist with ODC, and we're of course increasing the number because we can see the value. Okay, there are internal constraints. I'm not gonna speak a lot about this because I think anybody who's involved within their own small or medium-sized company will know their constraints but uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to, uh, about them from the side which we have seen. And of course, there are the external ones. And we are hoping actually for the remainder of this year and the coming years that we come up with a win-win strategy and the formula would start to be uh, paying uh, dividends for uh, both uh, sides. And so I'm on dry dock and this is uh, an overview of the dock. We have two of the largest uh, dry docks in the world, okay? And of course, they are catered with uh, 14 different sized uh, cranes. Uh, the photo itself is not to present the company as such, but you can see that bringing a ship would involve uh, so many kinds of technical, uh, uh, technical uh, uh, activities. At the same time, there is the um, uh, supply chain when we bring a ship, we bring it for, let's say, $1 million. Okay, I guarantee you that at least 40%, if not more of that chunk, will go to smaller suppliers okay, and smaller uh, service providers. Uh, of course, you can see there are, of course, the workshops, there are pipe, electrical, automation, navigation, there's the painting, the welding. Uh, the, uh, some interesting photos of what goes on in the company. Uh, last year, we finished uh, 100 ships. So far, since the operations in 2011, uh, 400 vessels have been delivered already, and the uh, projects vary. No shipyard depends on, its, on itself. Uh, many shipyards, and there are examples in the Gulf where they started, they had nowhere close by. They used to get uh, help and spares from Singapore. Some of the activities were brought from all over the world. At the moment, these shipyards are surrounded by at least 4,000 smaller companies which get their part of every single project which the yard wins. Okay, not going into much detail. This is just the activities for anybody who's involved with technical. Uh, see, uh, the, the, uh, besides the technical, there are the crew who come, so there's the catering services, the decoration. We have the gardening, the uh, so many, you know, the, the transport so many different activities which are related with a company which has more than 2,000 employees, okay? One quarter of this number are actually um, uh, made by various uh, SME uh, employees. Okay, so why do we need them? Uh, this is a very volatile business and it's very difficult to guarantee that you have the correct amount of uh, people, okay? Uh, the correct amount, what we call capacity, and trying to meet the load. Sometimes you have a couple of vessels, and suddenly you have 10, 12 uh, projects at the same time. Responding to this uh, high demand 
requires so many little bodies around you. They take their share, but at the same time, you become much stronger in deciding which projects to go for. Rejecting projects damages your name for a long period of time. And depending on your own is a very wrong strategy to do it. Now, if you keep doing this, you are damaging your name, as I said, and gradually you see that the, the business you, you keep securing becomes less. Okay, we have uh, customers who are becoming much more loyal, and especially since last year, since we started, uh, because we are uh, not rejecting. Uh, the number of cancellations are very low. Uh, any additional work which they might want to do when their ship is not being used at sea, now we can guarantee, or at least we can guarantee a big portion of it with the help of the SMEs we are dealing with. And of course, uh, community development. We are using, uh, most of the companies we're using are either from Muscat or Docom itself. And uh, we uh, realized that the ones which succeeded have basically done their part in, of course, employment and doing their own little bit for the community, which uh, many of you guys have been encountering, I guess. And of course, good marketing. Uh, the market with ship repair is the most difficult. One dissatisfied customer, okay, can ruin one whole market and makes it very difficult for the next coming months to secure any business from that part of the world. 2016 is a very poor year market-wise, but Oman Dry Dock is still doing a good business, and actually we are drawing business from inside the Gulf, although we are still a standalone company, okay, in, uh, in, in the middle of Oman, and until now you know there is no, the, the logistic site is just being prepared, there is no industrial site, so we're coming up with strategies to have resident subcontractors use as much SMEs from inside Oman as, as, as possible. Okay, so uh, this might look complicated, but it's not. Now, the way we respond to business depends on how much people on, or how much capacity we have. Now, any SMEs which are interested to be part of the operations of ODC and make their, their bit of money from it, they need to concentrate on the way we do business. We have our own direct workers, okay, and this is the white bit here. And then we have the long-term subcontractors, and some of those, or half of those, are actually Omani companies, which started with us early. They had a few failures, but now they're much stronger as they understood the requirements of our technical side. I'm not talking about the non-technical side, which I mentioned, okay, where many more SMEs are involved in. So either secure your part as being a resident subcontractor, so somebody who understands the business and ready to be there, or be ready to be on on-call basis. And that part, okay, is mainly Omani uh, companies because you need to respond within 24 hours and therefore having an international SME, okay, where visas and tickets and whatever is involved is, uh, is a failure. And that part actually uh, constitutes the additional work which sometimes is more than 25% of the project value. Okay, so the idle cost that happens due to seasonal work, as I said, it just keeps changing. Mobilization uh, delayed by subcon. This is the way Oman Dreidok used to do it in the past, depending on international companies, and it was causing problems. Now more and more Omani companies are filling the space. And and uh, quality compromised as workers are not the same. And this is again, if you don't have an SME which you can trust and deal with as, all the time, they keep changing the people they send to your yard. And of course, uh, we had some uh, projects which uh, had uh, impacted the loss because of the wrong type of uh, SMEs used. Okay, we are having more in-house uh, manpower. So the more subcontractors, smaller companies which we can secure, the more we make them resident within our yard. Uh, we are realizing, of course, there is no delay in mobilization because they're next door to us and quality will not be compromised. And idle cost as I said, now what we are doing for Romani companies is that if the workload is low and they're idle, then we compensate them for that idle time. And this is the map of where SMEs we deal with in Oman, 
at the time being. So some of the constraints, some of them who even were working with something technical related had, had of course, this fear of entering into the works of the dry dock. And many of them who approached us, last year I think we, we tried more than 30 companies on the technical side only, and uh, double that number in the supply and logistics side. Yeah, we faced uh, where they really want a job, they can see projects are coming and they know they can make some money, so, and they, they promise that they have everything and they have what it takes to uh, do the project, and some of them, I think they were overwhelmed by the task, no matter how small it was, and instead of causing success to their business, it was uh, exactly the opposite. Managing skills, we had uh, companies, Omani companies, who come and we, we give them Small business, you know, uh, $50,000 plus business. And we realized that the management or the owner is nowhere to be seen. And uh, this created so many problems with the uh, flow of work from their employees or the uh, supply from their companies. Yeah, and this is costing the job. Uh, some of them are good with a certain activity. And once they related to the uh, shipping world, uh, they, they lack that knowledge. And because they want the business, they have problems with proper costing. And this creates them so many problems. Of course, they come back again to the employer being a major company in Oman, a government company, uh, to help them out. And uh, so many cases have been seen, uh, especially in 2015. And uh, payment uh, terms, again, they don't uh, calculate their cash flow properly and it's problems which they face, and uh, again, it impacts on the flow of work, and the impacts finally are on, on Oman dry docks. And again, responding to higher demand. So even if they're doing a good job, once the demand is higher, although the money is there, and sometimes for higher demand, it's double the amount, you realize that these guys have no uh, width and, and not much depth to respond. And external constraints. Okay, registration of the company. Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys face this, but uh, the dry dock, for example, is uh, within uh, CZAD, and uh, they have some uh, issues of uh, registering, although it's supposed to be the easiest in Oman. Uh, in any case, this is just a general one. Uh, trying to get the required expertise and uh, SMEs. It's, it's much easier for a, a giant company to get through the uh, bureaucracy of visas and whatever. We realize that the smaller you get, uh, the more difficult it gets for them to secure uh, these kind of uh, important documents. We have, of course, um, the small, the medium, and we deal for security reasons with some of uh, the large companies and uh, we see that uh, the smaller companies cannot compete, not in terms of uh, price or uh, time of delivery. And that's why these guys uh, suffer to sustain a good uh, business partnership with, with Oman Dry Dock or similar companies of the same size. Okay, and under pricing, so they really want, you don't know what their financial situation is like, they want any business and they keep pushing their prices down and then they suffer at the end of the day. Uh, again, we talked about the flexibility of, of uh, payment terms. They're very important. When we get a ship, it's paid within 90 days, 120 days, and these payment terms are subjected also to the suppliers of, uh, of the services. Yeah, and then this is one we've seen. We've seen that bigger companies, actually it's very easy for them to lure any good skilled people within the smaller companies, even within our yard. So you find somebody who has a good workforce and suddenly he has nobody. Other companies offer them better contracts and suddenly he has no business. And uh, localization of workers, uh, they face so many things, uh, problems with, the, with the, some government regulations. Uh, we uh, actually help, as I said, it's much easier for us to get through those. And uh, banks, are reluctant to lend money. And uh, all of these I get actually from the survey sheet which we have uh, supplied to all our suppliers and those who responded. 
and uh, again trying to recruit anybody skilled once they lose the ones they started their business with. And uh, management uh, weakness. Uh, so again, this is what we aim to have from next year onwards, we're targeting new markets, more industrial work, not only ships, but uh, onshore business. And uh, that's why I think the involvement of DSMEs in Oman will have a major role to play. Uh, as I'm saying there, we are doing ship repair, we're doing some industrial fabrication for oil fields. Uh, we are going for every single big project in Oman because we're major, major workshops in the middle of the country with no uh, geographic uh, constraints. The, uh, uh, even the type of products we're going for is uh, expanding and we are, uh, we are seeing uh, really good success with the ones which have done it. So a number of uh, SMEs are quite successful and we want uh, more of the same uh, for both sides. Okay, things to keep in mind. So we are identifying the services, strengths, and risks. Okay, and uh, we have to ensure that high skill manpower are there. Uh, no second chances, this came in 2016. Uh, economic uh, uh, market uh, in, in general has put uh, some tough decisions. And uh, we've, as I said, some, some of the SMEs will come and they would, uh, submit that they can give the service within a certain amount of days. We give them trust, we give them that activity. Uh, suddenly they will be only a mailman between them and another company in a neighboring company, uh, country. By the time they bring the service too late, we realize that the, even the parts are wrong. And this is some of them, they use this to win some time to supply. And we used to give second chances, third chances, but the damages are a, a bit too much, especially on our uh, dissatisfied customers, and that's why it's no chance. Uh, only only uh, first chance, no second chances. Okay, and of course, sound like a marketing slogan, uh, but uh, really this emphasizes how much we need SMEs in our uh, business currently, and ensure, of course, the cash flow, which we mentioned in a few times now. And don't limit yourself to your original discipline. Once you have entered and you have created a good reputation, once you're trusted by the actual management of the yard, there are so many chances, as I said, technical or non-technical, for you to uh, explore. And that's why if you have a good management of the first activity, you don't need to restrict yourself with that one. And many other doors can be open. Okay, always have a contingency plan to keep the service uh, delivery time, and this is very important. Uh, you, you don't be narrow-minded. Okay, things will change as you're doing the work. Nothing is perfect. No, it's not according to what you wrote uh, in, in a piece of paper, but so many circumstances. That's why, that's why there should be a, another plan, contingency plan for you to deliver. And uh, always have uh, ways to uh, resolve disputes. Okay, and don't be a cover page for another international company. Uh, make your own footstep. Really, you get all the trust and help from uh, this big company, so you don't need to be uh, the, the man in the middle, because even if you have any profit margins, they're gonna be very thin and easily damaged. Okay, questions? Oh, that has gone quick. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Um,